Since the dawn of time, man has been trying to tap into the power of physics to unlock the mysteries of the universe. While the ancient physicists from Aristotle to Galileo to Newton and Einstein have laid the cornerstones to our understanding of the world, their task is left undone. A new breed of physicists has undertaken this challenge with the resources of the 21st century at their disposal. These new physicists will be put to the test and all of the skill and daring they have learned over the last 12 years will be put to the test as they embark on the 2010 King of the Hill competition. Three, two, one, go! Yeah. Go! your task is relatively simple. You're going to build a contraption out of two mouse traps that's going to be placed on one side of this ramp. Another vehicle will be placed on the other side of the ramp and the two cars will head toward each other. The car that gets the furthest from where it starts will be declared the winner. You'll be placed into a double elimination bracket as you go through until we have one vehicle that's declared. There's several choices when it comes to making your mouse trap car. You can make something as simple as this mouse trap car. We used to have the two mouse traps on the wood plank and some simple wheels. Or you could make something more advanced, like this guy here. One of the key aspects to your grade will be having a theme or innovation aspect to your vehicle. This vehicle is very nicely decorated and has a very menacing front tailgate there to take out the other vehicle. This is another excellent example of use of theme titled Midas Touch. The car is constructed in a very simple design with two mouse traps on top and then CDs for wheels, but painted entirely in gold. Another good use of theme and decoration is this vehicle here, titled Little Things Come in Small Packages. Clearly it's wrapped up like a package and is very small. Theming is a very important part of the project because if you're designing a vehicle for a company or some other project for your boss, they're going to want to have some aspect of it that sets it apart from the competition. Just presenting a bland project that everyone else could make themselves doesn't help you get the money when you want to get your job. You need to have something special that makes your product more likely to sell than something else. Here are some other examples of well-themed vehicles. Another important consideration in the design of your vehicle is the size of the vehicle. You could go with a small and light vehicle that might have some advantage in terms of speed, as this vehicle here did, or you can go a different route and go with the larger vehicle, as this one did, and get it propelled up the hill. There are other difficulties to think about with, with this. How are you going to create enough energy to get up the hill? And is it going to be a better option for you than a smaller vehicle would be? Now let's go over some of the instructions. First, let's review the overview. You have to work in a team of two or alone to design a vehicle to direction. I really want to stress here that the vehicle has to go up a hill. Many times students forget that fact and only test the vehicle on flat surfaces. Please make sure you remember the vehicle has to go up a hill. Next, the design requirements. The first part has one of the most important phrases. It says you can only use two mouse traps and four rubber bands. The key word there is italicized mouse traps. You cannot use a rat trap in the vehicle. They're both dangerous and provide unfair advantage. No other energy sources are allowed. No chemical sources, no fuel tanks, no air rockets, nothing else besides two mouse traps and or four rubber bands. Remember, only mouse traps, no rat traps. Moving through the rest of the rules. Your vehicle may use any means you can devise for reaching the other side of the hill and for preventing your opponent from reaching your side. But, please note, it must do this automatically once the vehicle is started. You can extend an arm, you can throw or drop an object, or you can just bulldoze over someone, but you can't touch the vehicle once it starts. The vehicle must be self-propelled and it cannot leave anything at the starting line, such as a launching platform or anything else along those lines. 
Size restrictions are that the vehicle may be no longer than 12 inches and no wider than 8 inches at the moment it starts. When it finishes, it can be a different size. When the race car starts, that's as big as it can be. Some of you will want to know how we're going to declare the winner. Simply put, after 15 seconds or when all the motion has stopped, whichever vehicle has traveled furthest from where it started is declared the winner. If neither vehicle got across the crest or both finished on the set opposite of which they started, a draw will be declared and the instructor will decide which course of action to take. Here are some hints for you. The biggest hint I can give you is that you should design for speed. The the vehicles that go fast and reach the top of the hill first typically are the ones that do the best. Also, you want to think about offensive and defensive strategies. Are you going to design something to keep a vehicle from stopping you? Or are you going to design some kind of aspect to your vehicle that's going to hurt another vehicle? Either is perfectly allowed. You want to design your vehicle to be durable. The vehicle, if successful, will be racing several times during the day. You need it to be able to last those times without requiring a substantial amount of construction in between races. If you have a part that you think will break often, you need to make sure it's easily repaired so we can get through the competition quickly. The project has been broken down into steps for you to take as you complete it. You need to complete each of these steps and the appropriate day or before in order to receive full credit. Today, April 12th, is the introduction to the project. Next step if you take is by April 20th, you need to have a set of preliminary ideas completed. Once you turn in the preliminary ideas, they will be reviewed and returned to you, and by April 27th, you need to have a final design idea ready to go. The week of May 3rd through May 5th, you need to have a prototype of your vehicle ready that makes it up a ramp. That's when you will come in and test it. The actual competition then will be May 21st after AP tests are over, so there should be no conflict in that sense. After we have the competition on May 21st, you'll be required to turn in your overall report by May 23rd. Since the preliminary ideas are the first step in the project, that's what we'll talk about next. For the preliminary ideas, you are to research different ideas for mousetrap cars. You see them on the internet, by asking your classmates or parents, or by various other means. When you have done that research, you need to have picked three different ideas to sketch and discuss. You need to turn in a sketch of each of those three ideas. You need to describe each contraption, including an analysis of the strength and weaknesses of each of the three designs that you're looking at, and then why you would choose that as a possibility. And then, what are your plans moving forward? How are you going to pick one of those three designs? Even if you've already decided on one design to go with, you still need to turn in three potential designs with a full analysis in order to receive full credit for this part of the project. So there you have it. That's your project. Today in class, you'll have time to work with your group to discuss ideas for your mousetrap car. You can even discuss with your neighbors different ideas, plans, and strategies that you might be using in order to make the best mousetrap car possible. As we go through the project, remember to stay strong, stay smart, and make a project even Einstein would be proud of. Have a good day.